Hello everyone, I'm Qinghai from UIUC. Today I'm very glad to introduce our work, Active Attribute and Network Alignment. This is a joint work with Liang Yue, Professor Wu, Professor Cao, Professor Ying, and also my advisor, Professor Hao Hongtong. Network alignment aims to find the similar same users across two networks. For example, in the given two social networks, Facebook and Twitter, we the aims to match the same user account across these two social networks. Network alignment is also widely explored in other application domains, including social science, biology, recommendation, and financial fraud detection. For example, in biology application, network alignment aims to match the same protein molecules according to their structure. One type of uh, existing approaches to solve the network alignment problem is to use the static network information, where the key idea is to follow the consistency in network topology and attribute. For example, if we, if we want to determine whether node 2 and node 2 prime are the correct alignment, we need to consider whether they share a similar network structure or they share a similar edge attribute or node attribute. So this function, loss function here, actually encodes the consistent, consistency in terms of topology, node attribute, and edge attribute. Another type of method is active learning based, where the key idea is to actively query the uncertain nodes in terms of uh, correct matchings. So for example, if we want to align node network G1 and G2, we first sample two matchings denoted as M1 and M2 here. We can see that uh, given these two matchings, node 1 and node 2 are aligned to the same node, which are A1 and B1 respectively. However, node 3 is aligned to two different nodes, which are C1 and C2. Therefore, in terms of matching, node 3 is more uncertain. So we can see that this is a good candidate to query. However, there are some limitations in the matching-based method. First is that the direct influence, the impact of influence is underexplored. Also, this method samples multiple matchings before query. Sometimes it is not efficient in terms of computation. In this given example here, we can observe that if we want to align network GS and GT, initially it is very difficult to obtain the correct alignment due to graph isomorphism. If we perform a query on node 1 and node 4 and get their correct alignment, then the rest of the nodes can be also be correctly aligned. However, if we do some random query like node 2 and node 5, it is still very hard to get the true alignment, correct alignment. So we can also that different queries have different impact to the alignment results and our question is what would be a good strategy to select these essential or important nodes to query next i'm going to introduce the technical details of our proposed method in static attribute network alignment it aims to solve this following linear systems where the w tilde encodes the topology and attribute consistency, and this each vector represents the alignment preference. And after we reshape this vector, we get a matrix H. So it contains the prior knowledge of how similar uh, nodes are. In general active learning, the key idea is to iteratively query an oracle to label some new data points. Some strategies are uncertain based or according to the expected model change. For example, in this problem of binary classification, we can see that these two nodes with question mark are very close to the decision boundary. Therefore, we are very uncertain about their prediction results. So these two nodes are very good candidates to query their label. So now we can give the formal definition of our problem, active attributed network alignment. 
So in this problem, we are given two attributed networks, GS and GT. And our goal is to align the nodes across these two networks. And also we have an initial preference matrix H0. If we have zero knowledge about this preference, then we can set these values uniform, following a uniform distribution. And also we are allowed to do key queries, which is a budget. And we assume to have an access to an oracle, which can provide the annotation or labeling for the alignment. Also, we have a utility function, which as the which serves as the evaluator for the alignment result. And the goal is to find a set of key most influential nodes for the oracle to query, so that the alignment accuracy for the remaining nodes can be improved. In general active learning, the key idea is to select a node with a large uncertainty or large informativeness. So in this problem, we also need to define the informativeness, informativeness of a node query. And uh, first, we propose to use this following two utility functions, which maps the solution vector x to a scalar value. By having this scalar value f of x, we can now define the inference for the query. The first definition is for the node pair query. We define it as the derivative of this scalar value f of x with respect to the corresponding value in the h matrix, hij. For example, if we want to calculate the inference for the query between node 2 and node prime, we can set this value as h. 2 to prime, and then we can calculate the node pair query for the, this specific node pair. And the node query inference is defined as the aggregation for the corresponding node pair query. For example, if we want to calculate the node 2 query inference, then we can aggregate all the node pair query inference between 2 to the every nodes in this second in the second network and our next question is how can we compute this query influence to calculate the query influence let me use the squared l2 norm as the utility function so for the node pair query influence we can directly apply the chain rule to the partial derivative term and by replacing the uh, solution vector x with this uh, numerous matrix term we can, we can get the uh, equation to calculate the node pair query with the node pair ij so if we take a further look at this uh, equation we can see that it is equivalent to first take the case row of the p matrix which is the numerous matrix here and multiply it with the vector solution vector x. This is a value for the node pair query inference. So for node query, we can extend uh, these uh, indices in this matrix P, and we take the slice of the corresponding rows and multiply with the solution vector x. And then we do the aggregation, which is equivalent to this L1 norm term here. So this table summarizes all the equations to calculate the query influence. For example, in the entropy utility function, it is very similar to the node uh, to the L square L2 norm utility function, where the difference is to uh, add this term log of x. This log operation is the element-wise logarithmic function. We can observe that uh, this P matrix uh, includes a matrix inverse, which is uh, not efficient in computation. To avoid direct compute this uh, matrix inverse, we first denote this Y vector equals P X, and then we solve these linear systems by the iterative power iteration method. And then this query influence for a specific node j can be calculated using the L1 norm 
for the corresponding values in the y vector. So there are two main challenges in computation. First is that we need to update the alignment solution vector, which is x. Also, we need to calculate the y vector in order to get the uh, query inference. According to the chronicler Quilo subspace method, we can solve this linear system in linear time with respect to the network size. So basically, at each iteration, we first compute the solution vector x. Then we replace this preference align, uh, alignment preference with this updated x vector. And then we can solve the y vector and uh, get the query influence. So for the algorithms, we need to initialize the query node set as empty. And then we add all the nodes in the first network in the query pool. So at each iteration, we need to first update the solution vector x. And we select one batch of nodes with the largest influence from the, the equations. So in this example here, after we query node 1, node 4, so the query pool would become this 2, 3, 5, 6, because we have query node 1, node 4. So we add these two nodes in the query set. Also, we need to update the H matrix. So, so to update the H matrix, we can set the true alignment, the corresponding value to be 1, and the rest of the values to be very small. Then we can get the alignment result for the remaining nodes and the query set. In the experimental evaluation part, we want to answer the following two research questions. The first one is that we want to see whether our proposed method are accurate in selecting the influential and important nodes for query. Also, we want to see whether the attribute information can contribute to our strategy. From the perspective of efficiency, we want to see that we, whether the proposed methods are fast and scalable. We perform our experiment on six real-world datasets, which are publicly available. And we construct the following four alignment scenarios, and we define the query budget and the batch size according to the network size and the ground truth we have. We also want to demonstrate that, that our method actually works for different underlying network alignment algorithms. So we choose these three algorithms as the backend uh, solver for the network alignment problem. And also we compare our method with the following comparison methods. For the effectiveness result, we can see that our methods constantly outperform all the comparison methods in terms of the alignment accuracy for the remaining nodes. Also, this ab ablation study shows that the attribute information can have a better performance compared to the non-attribute version of our method and the gives matching method. For the efficiency result, we can see that our method can achieve a linear scalability with respect to the network size and also our method can achieve very good balance between the quality and the running time. And on the top left corner, our, our method and the corresponding fast solutions can achieve very good performance in quality and also has a very lower running time compared to the other comparison method. In conclusion, we studied the active attribute network alignment problem. And uh, we propose an influence function based query strategy. And we also propose an algorithm with fast solutions that work for existing network alignment methods. From the experimental result, we can show that our proposed strategy outperforms all the comparison methods in terms of uh, improving the network alignment accuracy. Uh, our proposed method can also achieve very uh, high efficiency in computation. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, please feel free to
ask any questions or contact me directly.